Now, of course, with all modern RTS games, there's a kind of a rock, paper, scissors thing going on. Some units are weaker to other units. In this game, slaves are weak to everything. <laughs> Oh, hello there ladies and gentlemen, I am the Spiffing Brit and today we are playing Stronghold Crusader HD. That's right, look at those high definition graphics right there. There, sorry, what? Oh, well, apparently it runs in 1080p, so we can clarify it as high definition? Hmm. Something tells me that getting something from 2002 and scaling it up to 1080p does not necessarily make it high definition. But alas, I'm not a game developer, so I must be wrong. So yes, here we are in Stronghold Crusader HD, an absolutely lovely RTS game all about building castles and crusading. My goodness, what an absolutely wonderful game we have in store for us. So yes, this game was released in 2002. If you can believe it, three years after Age of Empires 2. And yet, for some reason, if we go to the multiplayer section of this game, even though we're on Steam, there is no way to play on a multiplayer server, unless one of you happens to own, I don't know, a port forwarded modem. You got any of those modems? Modems lying around friends back at home? If so, make sure to hit me up. My name is Lord Spiff, by the way, so if you're ever playing Stronghold Crusader in 2019, make sure to add me as a friend via the friend service system, which I'm sure is probably using GameSpy. But yes, of course, Age of Empires 2, three years older, and yet has an absolutely massive multiplayer community. I asked many of you to comment down below if you did still play the game, and lo and behold, there were thousands of you. Good lord, I am honestly stunned. So if any of you have actually picked up Stronghold Crusader HD in recent years once more, make sure to give me a shout because I'd be quite interested, as certainly in comparison with Age of Empires 2, this does seem to be the more abandoned one. So what will we be doing today? Well today I've decided we're going to break the game using its single most overpowered unit. Now some of you might be thinking, oh Stronghold Crusader, overpowered unit, maybe it's a fully kitted out knight, maybe it's a horse archer, or maybe it's just an absolute spam of archers, but alas, no. There is one much more much more overpowered creature in this game, which I'm pretty sure some of you might have overlooked as just a mere resource or a product used for production and nothing more. But ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to show you the magical power of the cow. That's right ladies and gentlemen, BAM! Stronghold Crusader HD cow only world conquest. I think this is probably the only time such a video will ever be created on YouTube. I think it's time we make something magical today ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to go into a crusader game and let's go for a custom game. Yes, this looks lovely. Now we're going to be doing a simple 1v1 game to start off with. I think sleeping with the enemy will be a lovely little start. Now, we're also going to need a randomised opponent, so let's see who we get. Ah, oh, we've been given the rat. He sounds rather interesting, let's see what the rat can offer us. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, a simple 1v1 deathmatch. But you know what, I'm going to be rather fair. I'm going to give the computer a slight advantage. I will start with only 7,000 gold, whereas he will have 20,000. Now I know I do like a good bit of a challenge in these games, because for some reason it turns out when I absolutely smash games to pieces, they tend to get a little bit easy. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Brace yourselves. Before we start, make sure you've sat back, you've relaxed, you've got your cup of tea in front of you, I've got my Mine. It's Yorkshire Tea Gold Blend today. Mwah. Glorious stuff indeed. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please do consider giving it a like. And why not maybe even tempt joining this community? Oh, you'd be very cheeky if you did. Now, before we begin, make sure your eyes have been prepped because what you're about to see is pure, unadulterated HD graphics. Brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. HD! Oh my goodness! I'll pause this immediately. <laughs> So yes, in this game, we now have a nightmare fuel man here. What the hell is this creature? Good lord, look at him. Good lord, that is terrifying. But yes, welcome to the crusading middle ages, where today we just need to defeat our opponent, the rat. Now this game moves very quickly because it's an RTS with absolutely no pause function, meaning I actually do need to do things occasionally. So to begin with, we want to get some food set up. Now for food, you need a great big granary, but also you need food production. So we're gonna grow some apple orchards because they look great, and 
and dairy farms because you know they look fun as well. For industry we're going to need a ton of woodcutters because these trees they gotta go. So there we go I've got everything I want to start down. We've got two food producing buildings, an apple orchard and a dairy farm. We've got some woodcutters running around. Not actually we'll increase it to two apple orchards. Oh yes we're going to be living off of apples today. It's a shame we're in the Middle East effectively doing some crusades so we don't actually have access to the greatest resource known to man. Tea. What an absolute shame. And of course to move things around in this game you need an ox tether. That's right these are just random cows which are hooked up to a post. We can use them to ferry goods around. Ox tethers absolutely lovely. Look at this guy. It's a chunky cow. But oxes also have a different use in this game. A somewhat magical use. Which don't worry we'll be getting to soon enough. Oh hang on a second. Are we getting attacked by the AI? Oh we are. Alright I'm now having to buy slaves off of the mercenary marketplace to beat up heavily well trained spearmen. These are the kind of dirty tactics I've had to resort to. But trust me it's not my fault. It's the AI's fault. Mostly because I gave them way too many resources to start off with. Alright one thing I will do is increase taxes to low taxes. This is going to annoy the peasants a bit but it is going to give us a stream of income. One thing you can do is crank it up to crueler than cruel taxes. Now that's just glorious. Alternatively if no one loves you you can crank this down to generous bribes which is going to cost you a lot of money but going to make peasants absolutely love you and they will start flooding into your city. And trust me you need the peasants in order to fuel the war campaign and also to buy them into slaves. That's another very important thing to do. You want a slave army? You can have a slave army. Watch this. Suddenly we have a 27 strong slave army. <laughs> so my men charge into the villages of the opposing city. Why are we doing such a thing? Well it's because you can actually kill the opposing villagers and that will just slowly damage the enemy economy. So slaves charge. Now of course with all modern RTS games there's a kind of a rock paper scissors thing going on. Some units are weaker to other units. In this game slaves are weak to everything. <laughs> Yes, it would appear my slaves have all gone now. <laughs> what a shame. Yes, at the moment, even though we have a ridiculous swarm of horse archers, the entire game is going to be spent waiting around until he builds up his first fortifications. This is a castle building simulator, so we need to wait for the AI to actually build his castle. As soon as he's done that, that's when we can start breaking the game. Other fun things we can build are punishment buildings. This is where you can treat your peasants to wonderful vacations in, say, the giblet or the dunking stool, which is one of my personal favourites. Or why not try something fun for all the family? That's right, it's the burning stake, ladies and gentlemen. Now these punishment blocks, they do technically make your population a bit scared of you. However, they do make your workers work much more efficiently. So chop to it, lads, before I actually end up building a chopping block. Aha, you see what I did there? Comedy gold. Now the AI in this game is somewhat interesting in that they basically want to lock onto your lord and there are some buildings that they will just attack and some buildings that they just won't. Yes this is often where the game's exploits really come into fruition. Now one fun thing I've decided to build are these massive towers here. These are perfectly balanced buildings if you can't tell because they are some of the tallest buildings in the entire game. So we're just going to flood them with archers and watch the archers go to work. Because when up here they have almost no chance of being actually killed. Also one of the OP natures of this tower is that from this position here we're able to shoot and hit the enemy lord. At the end of the day killing the enemy lord is the main aim of the game. So yes we don't even need to attack him and if he were to attack us we've just got our group of topless men with torches to defend us. Now the thing is from over here on these towers our archers are able to hit the enemy campfire which is where all of the peasants spawn in this game. So as a new peasant is created it lands here and is shot by our archers and dies before the enemy lord can send the peasant off to work in the orchards for food. Now this creates a bit of an issue because the enemy AI will never be able to have enough peasants to build an army to defeat my castles and equally they're never going to have enough peasants to build an economy. So yes whilst this isn't an exploit this is certainly a massive cheese. Anyway, I think I've created the army I was looking for. We've got around about 75 archers and I do believe that should be enough to just sit right here and out DPS anything they throw our direction. There we go, we have defeated him. He has been knocked to the ground. So, there you have it ladies and gentlemen. We have become the greatest lord and are treated to this wonderful 144p cutscene. Now on to another game. This time I'm going to make it a bit larger so that the AIs are definitely going to actually put up a fight. So it's four players all facing off against each other 
each other in a perfectly balanced map. This should give us a bit more space and also hopefully the AIs are actually going to build up against us. So let us begin. Now I'm just going to do all the boring things of setting up our economy. I'll hop back to you as soon as the AIs started to do something interesting. None of the AIs have quite had enough time to build up a complete castle and as soon as they do that's when I'm going to start showing off some lovely cheese. Ah here we have it. I think this is our first complete AI castle so I'm just going to drop the game speed down and rotate the map. So as we can see if we drop all of the walls this is the huge castle the AI has built. They've done a great job here. We've just one slight issue. They've built gatehouses. Now gatehouses allow me to use the greatest unit in the game, the Ox Teber, which we're just going to plop down here and here. These are just two random cows tied to a post. Yeah, that's all it takes, ladies and gentlemen. However, by building them in the gatehouse, the AI is not quite sure how it should be dealing with these Ox Tebers, because logically, they can shoot them with archers, but when it comes to actually getting close to them, the AI doesn't know what to do, as they are sat in the gatehouse, and if a gatehouse isn't accessible, the AI quite simply won't send out units. So, all we need to do is make sure that we completely lock this gatehouse here because as we can see there's a little bit of an exit and as soon as that's all sorted the AI is just going to sit in its castle and not do anything which is exactly what we want. Get that wood down. There we go. The wood is down. Lovely. Now I think actually we have managed to completely break the AI and I don't think they're going to be destroying these. <gasps> it's worked. Even though they managed to get some units out we've done it. We've trapped the AI. So yes as you can see they have a ton of melee units sat here but they only have two exits to their castle. These two two gatehouses. And whilst these oxes are sat here, they can't do anything to stop them. What they are doing is launching massive catapults over and archers to try and shoot the cows as soon as they spawn, with one slight issue. They're just never going to be able to destroy these buildings. Now is there any other economy for us to break? Ah, the Blue Kingdom has made the exact same issue, building a gatehouse down there and there. Lovely stuff indeed. Now immediately they're going to set to work and use their slingers to kill our cows, but the damage is already done I'm afraid. As they're sat down there, there is nothing you can do. There is no escape from your castle and you've just signed your own death warrant. So what's the final AI doing? Well they haven't quite finished their castle, but as soon as they have, we can set about ruining their day. Lovely stuff. I really appreciate the attempt from the yellow AI to really do their best to try and stop this, but they just haven't managed it. Now something you might have noticed is that around here, this entire area used to be covered in industry. For example, the AI is trying to place down all of these farms and woodcutter huts. The only issue is, uh, they can't because there's no pathfinding for their civilians to actually get out there. So all of their iron mines and stone mines have suddenly just stopped existing, all because I decided to place down five cows. That's right ladies and gentlemen, cows. Many of you probably walk through the countryside and you see a cow and you think, ah, oh, that's quite cute, but it's not really a threat to me, is it? Well, that's where you're wrong, because imagine if you wake up one day in the morning and you open your door and on the other side of it is an entire cow standing in the way. There's nothing you can do because the cattle prod taser hasn't been invented yet. So for that reason you can't really blame the AI for reacting in this way. Besides, they can't use a telephone to ring up the police to come and rescue them. There's nothing you can do. It is quite simply a cow sat in front of a massive stone gatehouse. Yes, so there you have it ladies and gentlemen. This is how to win the Crusades. If only the Europeans had realised the power of the cow, the AI really thinks they're doing something here by having all of these slingers stationed up here, just shooting away at these cows. But hey, this is AI programming from 2002, so we can't really expect too much. Although I must say, in comparison, Age of Empires 2 was much more impressive. All we need to do is wait for the Orange Empire to make the same mistake, and then we can hopefully bankrupt his kingdom as well. Yes, he has a gatehouse hidden here, so logically we can do the same thing. Let's get over here and place down an Ox Teva slap bang right here, and one slap bang right here. So there we go, I've just built a few more Ox Tevers and hopefully this should have completely broken the AI to a point where they don't- There we go, it has done it. You can tell because all of their industry buildings have just suddenly disappeared from existence. <laughs> We've done it again, ladies and gentlemen. So their entire industry has just been wiped out all in one go. All because of some lovely cows. There you go, Marshal Sir Longarm. I have used the superior tactic of bovine warfare to defeat you. Okay, it would appear they've finally given up and they are going to actually try and escape. Very well, it would appear, with all of the other AIs dealt with, I need to start focusing on our lovely Orange Empire first. 
So let's get all of my lovely archers and prepare them for war. Yes, it would appear the AI has gotten very grumpy with me and is sending out a heavily armed group of knights to deal with me. Very well, I will do my best to defeat them. But for this, we're probably going to need a few more men at our disposal. Yes, okay, archers, it's time for a full-blown retreat. I'm afraid you weren't designed to deal with knights. And you know what, I'll also build a few ballistas in my own land. Wow, the ballistas are really useful. Yes, it would appear an entire ballista is probably the perfect weapon to use against a cavalryman. Lovely stuff. Now, because almost all of the other AIs have been trapped inside their own castles, we've been presented a lovely opportunity, which is that we can access the lovely rare resources at the center of the map, whilst no one else can. And as you can see, when the AI is left to its own devices, it has decided to recruit about 90 slinger units, which it of course can't use, but it will position inside its own walls, just to sit there. Very interesting AI, very interesting indeed. But of course, we do need to keep an eye on the orange. They have got too much power at the moment. Decided to make a wall of cows and I hoped it would work, but I do believe it has in fact not worked and the knights will still be able to get out. Oh well, their economy will still keep fighting, alas. But we do have a distinct advantage over them, so we should be fine in the end. Also, there is a mass exodus of peasants to go and work all of these ox posts that we have built up, which of course are going to get shot down. So yes, our peasants are just going to walk through enemy territory and get killed, but you know, sacrifices have to be made. I just have tried to flood this entire area to try and block the gap that they currently have to get in and out of their territory. There's nothing I can do. They just keep finding a way through this maze of cows. Ugh, alas, I don't think it's going to be possible. And for that reason, the mass exodus of peasants marching towards their doom is going to have to continue, but I'm sure they, you know, they're putting up a good fight and they're going towards a good cause. I actually have an idea. Instead of actually fighting them, I'm wondering what if we simply get a trebuchet and destroy this massive wooden pole right here. So if we have a trebuchet and attack it from range, I believe if we can hit this out and then replace it with, I don't know, a few more cows, we should be able to completely neuter the orange AI. At the moment, however, they have their escape path. And they're going to be using that bad boy to try and defeat us. But our lovely bolters, that's what's going to be saving us from these highly trained knights at the moment. Nothing's more powerful than just having four ballistas all set up shooting heavily armoured knights. Some would say that it's slightly historically inaccurate that a knight can survive four ballista bolts to the chest and still continue riding a horse, but you know, it's only a game. <laughs> oh my goodness, this continuous line of peasants just marching towards their death. Yeah, maybe one day we should tell them that actually there is nothing waiting for them if they march towards the cow post. Maybe I should probably set about disassembling some of these. Ah, this will be fine. Alright, here we have it. Finally, a use for the trebuchet. They're in range to hopefully hit this dancing bear pole over here. Trebuchets, open fire. This is the greatest military objective. There we go, and it's gone. Now we can finally set about building the oxen cart. Bam, it's down. This should be the blocking one. Yes! There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The economy is gone in just one hit. An entire kingdom ruined. I really thought Orange would give us a run for their money there. It strikes again. <laughs> Other fun things you can use on the trebuchet? The cow launcher. This is one of my personal favorites. Just launch a carcass of a dead rotting cow all the way through the sky. Look at it come. Wabam. And this is genuinely chemical warfare of the Middle Ages. Absolutely glorious. You want a cow on that roof over there? Sure, you lob a cow on that roof over there. And now that we have access to the entire map, this just allows us to sit back, relax, and build up a beautiful kingdom before we then eventually decide to actually go to war with other people. But hey, there's no rush, ladies and gentlemen. We have all the time in the world. In fact, we can even start building dairy farms in the territories of other kingdoms. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing they can do to stop us. We want to build dairy farms right here? Sure, their archers can't hit us. You know what I think we could do with a cheese plantation right about here? That's right, we're no longer building cheese farms, we're building cheese plantations. Much better. Oh my goodness, the oasis in this middle appears to be completely broken because none of the heirs have been able to reach it. We've effectively been given 7,000 deer to work with, so I'm just going to spam out a ton of hunter's shacks and our food should be set forever now. But now I get to just sit back, relax, crank up the game speed and wait for everything to blow over. Because there's nothing the AI can do, so we can just sit around relax and enjoy the game at a speed which is much more leisurely. There we go. So I just want to sit back, relax and build up my cheese empire because really, you know, I don't play Stronghold Crusader HD for the Stronghold or the Crusading. I play it because I just want to see how many peasants can I get and just how much cheese is it physically possible for one kingdom to consume. Yes, some people like to grow hops and beer, but I mean, come on, what's much more fun? Of course, it's cheese. One of the fun things I like about this game is that, hey, you can 
can give people full rations, or if you really, really wanted to, wabam, no rations. Oh, lovely. I do enjoy starving some peasants, but hey, we have so much food floating around because there's no competition when it comes to hunting, there's endless space for my cheese farm wonderland, and of course, the endless peasants marching towards their death. Lovely. You know what? I think we should set up a few cheese farms over here as well. You know what? Let's set up some cheese farms over here in the Orange Kingdom, and we can probably get away with a few more cheese farms near the Blues. I'm sure they won't notice these bad boys cropping up. Now that we don't have to focus on other AIs, I'm actually allowed to sit back, relax, and really focus on growing our economy. The Kingdom of Spiftopia has gone from a small, minor nation to actually having a very large surplus population of peasants. We have 97 peasants, 98 peasants, there we go. The number of peasants does go up and down a lot, mostly due to the fact that a large portion of them are marching towards their doom. Now if we take a look at the wonderful Greatest Lord rankings, we can see that I have the best economy, sat at 5,800 gold. However, I actually do also have the smallest army. Hmm. <laughs> yes, over here in the Spiff Kingdom, we don't actually need a military, because all of our enemies have long since run out of food. Yes, one of the many issues of not actually having access to anything outside of the castle is that you can't grow any food. Now, in our current position, there are only a few ways we can defeat the enemy. Realistically speaking, we want to get rid of the oranges first, as they appear to be probably the easiest to take out, having only a ridiculous swarm of archers. In order to defeat them, we need to go about doing it in a very relaxed, careful way. You see, if we were to use trebuchets to just smash down these walls, all that's going to happen is that the AI is going to spill out and start getting its economy up and running again. So instead, I'm going to start producing a ridiculous swarm of archers. Now, these archers will hopefully one day get up to these walls and hopefully manage to take out the enemy archers. As soon as that's done, we can slowly start working on breaking down their castle one lord at a time. Their lord is going to take an absolute ton of hits, but with enough archers, anything's possible. So I'm afraid, Marshal Sir Longarm, there's nothing you can do, whilst these cows sit blocking your pathway. Good news, our granary is starting to absolutely fill up with cheese, meats, and apples. Lovely. And our lovely kingdom has grown to a glorious 1114 peasants. I just wondered why our supply of bows and spears weren't actually going up. It would appear that we've managed to accidentally completely fill up our previous armory. So yes, I've had to build a few more. We might as well start training up our swarm of archers, which are going to be helping us on the front line. But of course, for that, we're going to need a few more peasant hovels. Yes, population, grow, pay me taxes, and then fight on the front lines for me. So here we have it, 30 archers all marching towards the front line. And also to help out with our invasion, I've managed to hire 18 assassins. Now these guys are able to scale walls and do a lot of damage when you least expect them to. So I'm going to be using these cheeky guys to hopefully scale up and jump onto these walls and harass some of these archers here at the back. The hunting speed of our kingdom is not fast enough. As you can see, the deers are just multiplying at a horrendous rate. There is no way to stop the deer population now. They've gone too far. <laughs> right, here we have it. You know what? I think we've got enough. This should be a decent amount and hopefully enough to try and take out this kingdom. So, I'm just going to march them all the way down here and, of course, send our assassins up to this tower at the back and that should be all we need to take out this kingdom. So, archers, as soon as you're ready, open fire on these men. You may fire when ready. There we go. The assassins have made it up onto the walls and they've done it. They've killed all of the archers in one go. Beautiful stuff indeed. Yes, it would appear there is absolutely nothing that can stop a large group of assassins. These guys are brilliant. Right, there we go. We've managed it. We've destroyed all of their armies defending their lands. Now all we need to do is find a way to defeat that lord. Ah, oh, well, I guess if he keeps standing on top of his little perch, we should have no problem. There we go. So every time he comes out to play, we're basically just going to have to attack him. So that's one king effectively dealt with. We just need to wait for him to slowly kill himself by standing on top of his little keep. And as soon as we've done that, then we can set about moving on to the next few kingdoms. So I'll just speed up the game as he slowly defeats himself. Now the blue kingdom just looks like it's gone the exact same way. Way. They built this lovely little circle fort and filled it with dancing bears and then just hounded the walls with what appeared to be a ton of slingers and archers. So that's going to be a great laugh trying to break into. One of the things that I'm struggling to do is finding an effective way of keeping the enemy lord sat on top of his keep for a long enough time for our archers to do enough damage so that I'm not sat here for the next two hours doing this. So I'm sending over a team of 20 assassins who are hopefully going to be able to stand up there and keep the Lord occupied in one-on-one -on -one combat long enough for my archers to do all of the damage that they need to do. And there we go, we've done it. All it took was a ton of the assassins to get up there and backstab him, and there he goes. He's straight down. So that's one kingdom dealt with. Now we just need to get our army together and we can wipe out the remainder of the AI. Now I think we'll go and deal with the blue people.
And so begins the out DPS fest that is trying to see if our archers can destroy all of their archers. My goodness, this is going to be one absolute mess. Right, men, just keep opening fire on all of those archers. So, ladies and gentlemen, I had the game crash on me. I'm not sure why. I think potentially what happened was the AI just reached a point where they had so many units trying to move across a pathway that didn't exist that it actually just ended up conceding. But nonetheless, I think you get the idea of what I was trying to show off here today. It's an absolutely lovely cheesy exploit where of course you just abuse the AI's ability to pathfind in this game. And if you have enjoyed what you've seen and want to give this a try yourself then hey feel free to give this video a like. Why not give me a comment down below of your favourite cheesy exploit from the Stronghold series. If you're feeling especially saucy today get your cup of tea, give it a sip and do consider subscribing. It'd be absolutely lovely to have you here in this community as hey for some reason we've managed to hit 250,000 subscribers. That's an absolutely ludicrous number. Thank you very much. As always a huge thank you to my majestic patrons who make these lovely silly videos possible. Thank you very much, your support is greatly appreciated. And if you're looking for a video to watch next, then look no further than this video on screen now. Trust me, you're going to love it. Anyway, I've been the Spiffing Brit, and I will see all of you in the next one. Have a lovely day. And Dave, if you haven't had your tea throughout the entirety of this video, I'm very disappointed. Go and make one now. Classic Dave move right there.